So, on September 22nd, 2018, Scooby-Doo on Zombie Island has turned 20 years old, and because it is Halloween, and because it turned 20 years old, why not make this both a Halloween and anniversary review? You heard the screeching of an owl, you hear the wind begin to howl, you know there's zombies on the prowl. Hey there everybody, this is 22 Tiger Dude here, and welcome to Anniversary Reviews. Where I review a movie and celebration of a certain anniversary that it has reached. And the movie I'm going to be reviewing is Scooby-Doo on Zombie Island. So Scooby-Doo on Zombie Island is by three directors. And I hope I pronounce these names right, but it is directed by Hiroshi Oyama, Kazumi Fukushima, and Jim Stenstrom. So Scooby-Doo on Zombie Island is about when the Mystery Incorporated gang, they've gone their separate ways because they just got bored of mystery solving. But Fred and Daphne, they're running this television series. Velma is working at this mystery bookstore and Scooby and Shaggy you know they're doing their own thing to say the least and since it is Daphne's birthday Fred reunites the gang and so the gang is back together and because Daphne wants to do a story at this island that is apparently haunted they go over there and let's just say when they are on this island there are more things than they expected to really discover while they're there so, before I do review Scooby-Doo on Zombie Island, I did bring in a guest star, and that guest star is none other than Andrew Hayes. So, Andrew, you take it away, dude. What is going on, guys? Andrew Hayes here. And before I get started on my review, I gotta thank my boy, 22 Tiger Dude. Thanks, man. Uh... It Definitely going to be a lot of fun reviewing this, uh, and, uh, you know, Scooby-Doo on Zombie Island is something that I watched a lot as a kid. It is, uh, or was going to be very interesting, you know, to watch this again. Definitely a lot of fun watching this again, as I haven't seen it in years, but anyway, uh, Scooby-Doo on Zombie Island is, uh, the first of, uh, long-running series of directed video Scooby-Doo movies. Uh, this one I, I came out in 1998. So that was over 20 years ago. And I, they're still making these directed video Scooby-Doo films today. The first four is what I consider to be, you know, its own series. You know, this one was the first one. And then the one after that was Witch's Ghost. And then Alien Invasion. And then Cyber Chase. Those were like the real four uh, ones that I watched a lot as a kid and definitely, you know, the four that I think most people consider to be, you know, the ones that everybody remembers. Like I said, it was very fun re revisiting this because I haven't seen it in years. I was wondering if I would still feel the same way as I did and I gotta say, yes, I did feel the same way I definitely had a lot of fun with this I still love it like I did you know when I was a kid you know some odd years ago and I, I definitely love what they did with this movie and again what I I think the big thing why I, I like what they did was that they they present a real threat in this movie it the threat is something supernatural this time it's not fake or anything it is something supernatural, and I think that added a nice twist to things. And I like how they were all like, you know, we want something real. Like, that's why we do this. We want to see real ghosts, real ghouls. But every time it ended up being fake, and I like that aspect of it, and I think that really added to the movie and to the characters. I, I and, you know... For and for this one to be something supernatural and and whatnot, it, it, I think really added a ton to the movie. I love the way the characters are portrayed, especially you know Scooby and Shaggy. Uh, everybody really, but especially them. I think that uh, the, the, those two have always been my favorites. Um, 
And I just loved seeing them in this film. And they really made me laugh and smile and all these things in the movie. You know, they start off in the movie. They start off as they're like airport. They work for airport security. And, you know, <laughs> they, they Scooby sniffs out, uh, you know, cheese and whatnot. And they eat it all. And, you know, they get fired because of that. And, uh, you know, uh... Shaggy is upset about it. He goes, this is the best gig we ever had. Free food, this, that, and the other thing. And I really, really thought that was funny. And, you know, seeing them get scared by a bunch of stuff. You know, there's a, a montage in the beginning of the film when they first get back together. And investigating, before they go to the bayou, they investigate all this other stuff, you know, for real ghosts. But that all ends up being fake. And in each one, uh, you know... Scooby and Shaggy are like really really scared but they somehow inadvertently figure out that it's fake and I just thought that montage was fantastic and uh, there's a couple montages in this movie and they're all really good but that one in particular uh, really well done. you know they go to New Orleans and meet various different characters Lena, Simone, Jock, Bo, Snakebite, Scrubs uh, all characters and I Really enjoy them. They really add a lot to the story. And uh, when everything comes you know, out and everything is revealed, uh, they really add a lot to it and the mystery and whatnot. And you really are invested from the story, at least for me, because I really want to know what's going on. Because, you know, this is the first time that something has happened that seems real. And it, it is real in the story. And I love this. I love this movie as a whole. It really brought back a lot of memories for me. And I'm a huge fan of the Scooby-Doo franchise. I love, you know, I think it brought every justice to everybody. And I think it per still holds up for a 20-year animated movie. And I absolutely love it. I would give this an A+. Plus. If you're a fan of the Scooby-Doo franchise, please check this out because this is definitely one of the best animated movies, I would say. And uh, I definitely want to check out the other ones now, especially like the next uh, three, you know, the other one and the set of four. Uh, I really want to check those out. But um, anyway, thank you guys. Uh, for uh, listening to my review, and thank you to 22 Tiger Dude for having me on here. Uh, please subscribe to my channel, uh, comment, like, subscribe my videos on my channel, all that kind of fun stuff, you know. And uh, I'll check you back out on my channel. Thanks, uh, 22 Tiger Dude. It's uh, been a pleasure. Thank you so much, Andrew Hayes, for reviewing Scooby Doo on Zombie Island. So, Scooby Doo on Zombie Island is a film I remember watching as a kid. As for the movie itself, I don't remember a whole lot of it. I do just remember watching it as a kid. I remember watching stuff like this or Cyber Chase, all these other direct to duty movies back in the day. And this is actually the first of the Scooby-Doo direct to duty movies. So this is kind of cool for me to really review the first direct to duty movie because I don't recall ever reviewing a Scooby-Doo movie on this channel until now. And I figured because this movie did turn 20 years old, I give it a revisit and see if I enjoyed it as much as I remember enjoying it when I was a kid. Because when I was a kid, I was a huge Scooby-Doo fan. And I do still like Scooby-Doo to this day. I have to say, I still really enjoyed the movie. It's still a ton of fun. Definitely the perfect movie to watch when it comes to Halloween. Starting off with the animation, I think the animation is absolutely beautiful. This is a direct-to-DVD movie and it's some of the best traditional animation I've seen for a direct-to-DVD movie. The character designs, when they go on this remote island, uh, the details of that remote island, it looks absolutely gorgeous. And when we get to some of the designs of the creatures such as you know the zombies and whatever other creature you may encounter on without really spoiling anything it's designed very well i did really enjoy how this movie was animated and um i know traditional animation it takes a lot of time it is a skill that you have to be kind of patient with but 
Uh, I think the animation really is pulled off very well here and I have to really admire it. And considering this is a film that is directed by three directors, as I've already said earlier, I have to say these three directors did a really good job directing the movie. I really was so into this world. From the moment the movie opened, I was already interested in the story from the moment it opened. And it's very well paced too. It's only... One hour, 17 minutes, it's a 77 minute long movie, it's really not that long, and they don't waste any time in my opinion. I felt that they really did a good job of keeping things interesting, even if I already know how it's eventually going to go in its third act, I still think that it was very interesting, and I thought it had a very well-written story going for it. And I did really like how this film played with the supernatural element. That's what I feel made Scooby-Doo and Zombie Island very creative is how much they really played with the supernatural. What is real on this island? What is fake on this island? What can you really believe is happening on this island? And I did like how this even changed around the formula. Like, whereas we're used to seeing the gang solve, like, who is uh, behind that mask? Who is the one wearing the mask? Like, who did it? There's nothing like that this time around. There's no, okay, who is that person behind that mask? There is nothing like that. They actually change around the formula this time around. And I have to say, it worked. It was actually very cool to get something like that. Like, when the movie opens, yes, it does have that usual, like, okay, yeah, that typical Scooby-Doo stuff, which I really enjoyed. I really did enjoy how the movie opened. But then, you know, the gang went their own separate ways for a while, then they reunited, and then they go onto this island. And, yeah, they uh, kind of did change around the formula for what we're used to seeing in Scooby-Doo. And just as I've already said, it was all very well done. It's what really added the enjoyment of this movie for me. And the voice acting is really terrific here too. I thought everyone did a very great job playing their own roles. I thought Scott Inns did a really good job as Scooby-Doo. A lot of energy. He brings a lot of personality to the character. And I have to really give him a lot of credit for that. Billy West is great as Shaggy. Like, you can't really go wrong with him as this character. He really is just so top-notch when it comes to Shaggy. Shaggy and Scooby, you know, I personally think they're some of the best duos just ever. Television, movies, whatever. Uh, I love these two as a duo. Mary Kay Bergman did a very good job as Daphne. There was a lot of energy within her voice performance. Frank Welker is also fantastic as Fred. He really is just so good here and Fred is a character I did very much enjoy in this movie. BJ Ward did a very good job as Velma. Really enjoyed Velma here too. I don't want to really talk about other characters because I feel like it'll spoil something that you see in the story but all I'll say is the other voice actors that voice these other characters whether they're minor or kind of big uh, they all do a very good job. Mark Hamill. Yes Mark Hamill is in this film. I'm not gonna say who he voices, but when I found out it was him, I was actually kind of speechless because, wow, uh, like the fact that Mark Hamill is in the Scooby-Doo movie, I think that's so awesome, and he definitely did a very good job here. Tara Strong, who is credited as Tara Cherendoff in this movie, I thought she was also really good. Um, Jim Cummings is also in this movie, he does a very good job. And it is just so cool to see the mystery gang back together. It does a very good job of showing you what life has been like for them after they've stopped solving mysteries for a while. And to see them come back together, that was really nice. Music as usual with these Scooby-Doo movies, I also think it's really great. I thought whoever composed the music for this feature did a very well done job. The script is very well done. The gang does a very good job of interacting with each other as well as how they interact with other characters that we run into along with the movie. And to this movie's credit, one character that I thought was gonna be like, oh, it's so obvious. Like this movie really had me thinking, oh yeah, it's obvious that this character is bad. But then you learn later on that this certain character isn't as bad as you may think. And uh, I think if you've seen this movie, you know which character I'm talking about. To its credit, actually did a good job 
uh, of actually turning the tables around and making me going, oh, okay. So that was unpredictable right there. That was the one element in this film that I thought was actually unpredictable. As far as issues I did find with this movie, um, Daphne really got on my nerves and that tends to happen with Daphne sometimes. There's times where I really like Daphne and there's other times where she does get on my nerves and in this movie, she did get on my nerves. And it's my biggest glaring issue, honestly, with this movie. It's definitely Daphne because she's working for this television series and all she is focused on is the story. It was her attitude towards the gang that just personally really bothered me. I get that she wants to get the story out, but she didn't have to talk to the gang the way she did. And then also my other issue is, you know, the cliche where Fred is jealous of Daphne or of course Daphne gets jealous of Fred, you know, that whole thing. And I don't think that had to really be there. Also, the twist that they take with the third act was very predictable. Even though I was interested in the story, granted, and it was very well written, I was able to see where it was going and the twist was extremely obvious. And as soon as we do get introduced to these characters in the movie, these certain characters are really up to no good. The movie did make it obvious there. So yeah, it is obvious in terms of where they were leading towards that third act. Aside from that though, before I do forget, the third act is a ton of fun. That's definitely where, even though I had a lot of fun with the movie leading up to the third act, I definitely had the most fun when it came to the third act. It had some really spooky imagery going for it. There's this element in this film without going too deep into it that deals with voodoo dolls. And I really, really enjoyed how they played with that aspect. That probably is my favorite aspect uh, about this movie. Overall, Scooby-Doo on Zombie Island is the perfect movie to watch around this time of the year. It's been a long time since I've seen it, but revisiting it recently for its 20th anniversary, I really enjoyed it. I really got a huge kick out of the movie. I enjoyed the story, even if I was able to see where it was gonna lead to towards its third act. The animation's great, the direction is really great, and there's some really creative imagery that goes on. There's a lot of creative things in general with this movie that I don't want to spoil. Um, it's one of those things where I am trying to be careful with how I talk about this movie because where they do go with the story is actually very creative. And I am going to give Scooby-Doo on Zombie Island three out of four stars. So everyone, in the comments down below, let me know what did you think about Scooby-Doo on Zombie Island? Happy 20th anniversary to this film. Can't believe it's 20 years old. And what is your favorite Scooby-Doo movie? And I also want to give a big thank you to Andrew Hayes. This is my first collaboration with him, and it was a lot of fun collaborating with Andrew. Thank you so much for joining, my man. If you guys haven't checked out his channel, he has a really great channel. He does a lot of movie reviews. He does wrestling topics. He does all kinds of great stuff on his channel. If you haven't checked out his channel, I will leave a link in the description down below. This is Twenty to Tiger Dude here, and don't forget that I will always have Tiger Power!